Hello YouTube, welcome back to another review video. Here we are doing something different. Even though I have traditionally used this as a watch review channel, today I am sharing with you a headphones review. My viewers get to discover that I have another interest other than watches and that is headphones. I am a big fan of good high quality headphones and high quality speakers. I am a self-proclaimed audiophile and so it is my pleasure to share with you a review of some headphones that you may not be familiar with. You may have never heard of them but this is the MW65 model. It is created by a headphone company called Master and Dynamic and this is the very first headphones I have ever purchased or even tried out or held in my hands from this company. As you can see, it has a non-traditional style in the sense that this does not look as modern as it does classic with the way that these small little cups on the back of the headphones look. So in other words, Master and Dynamic has gone with a non-orthodox or non-traditional headphone design but it is considered to be a premium or luxurious headphone as you can see if you were wearing this headphone you would probably turn some heads when you're walking by because this is not a headphone that you commonly see in the wild so again this is the mw65 it is the flagship model headphone for master and dynamic it is a premium headphone and it comes with a premium price. It costs $499 shipped directly from the manufacturer. That being said, even at this price point, its main competitors are the Sony WH-1000XM3 and the newer XM4, Bose noise canceling 700 headphones, and then more closely priced to this headphone is its competitor, the Apple AirPods Max. So again, taking a closer look at this design and build, you will see that there are different materials used on this headphone than you would traditionally see on a lot of headphones. Number one is genuine leather. This headphone has genuine leather on the headband and also on the ear cups as well. That's very different from the faux leather or plasticky type material that you find on a lot of headphones, such as the Bose and the Sony and the Apple as well. So in terms of the build, I will tell you, even though it looks impressive, it doesn't quite feel as impressive. And when you look closely at some of the details on the quality of this headphone, it really does not match what I would expect from a $500 headphone. Again, while it is genuine leather and it smells nice, it feels nice and it's soft, and I understand that natural, genuine leather does come imperfect. It does have some natural imperfections, blemishes, variations between designs, but I didn't like when I looked at the headband and I saw this kind of crease right here. It just really did not inspire a lot of confidence in this leather. I would expect for it to be a little more blemish-free coming from the factory. So now some of these creases here are what we would expect to see on a on a leather a genuine leather and it does have very nicely done the uh, a stamped into the leather master and dynamic so that is nice i do like to see that touch on there uh, on the leather headband now these these ear muffs or ear ear cups are actually very comfortable this was one of the pluses about this headphone was the comfort here as opposed to the headband now I will say these are actually a little bit small and I will tell you I have small ears and I could feel that these were almost not big enough to fit around my ears so be cautioned that these might not fit the way they're supposed to around your ears and they can actually apply pressure on your ears and that may make them less comfortable. Now getting back to comfort again while the ear cups are nice and soft this area is not as soft as I would like for it to be. You can definitely feel the presence of these headphones on your, on the top of your head, even though they're not very heavy. They are roughly around the same weight as the Sony's, the Sony noise canceling headphones. They're approximately, give or take, uh, about 250 grams in weight. Now also related to the comfort is 
the fact that the this is almost like a vise on your head and while to some degree it is important to have some pressure if you look even if i just relax these the clamping force is so strong that it actually does even compress the ear pads without you know without me pressing on it now will that soften with time most likely can you expedite that by either bending the headband or putting it on some kind of object and leaving it on there overnight sure you could but it's just disappointing that you would have to make any adjustment to a $500 headphone to make it more comfortable. So that was a bit disappointing is that it was fatiguing in terms of wearing this headphone. And again, not due to the weight, but due to the clamping force and the, uh, the fact that this cushion is not really as soft as I'd like for it to be. Now, other build qualities, um, know that this is aluminum. And so while it is hard and sturdy and does have a nice sheen and nice finish, it's light. And that's really what has helped for this headphone to remain lightweight and more comfortable. Now this is a nice looking design. It gives the impression that this is a open design headphone, but the reality is that it's closed. It's closed in the sense that this headphone does not leak a lot of audio. It isolates well in terms of allowing the hearer to hear the music and not to hear as much outside noise. So this is not really a open headphone. These are not true pores through which sound can travel. Interestingly, on a expensive headphone like this, they have chosen to use physical buttons rather than any kind of touchpad controls. And I actually prefer that. I think it's a lot easier to control headphones because most of the time the surfaces that they use for a control pad, a touchpad, such as on the Sony noise canceling headphones where they put it on the side of the ear cups, it's hard to tell because you can't directly look at it when you're wearing the headphone. And so it's hard to tell if you're swiping in the right place physically feeling the buttons confirms that you're pressing the right command and it and it's easier to control the headphone. Now as you can see on the on the right ear cup that's where you have the volume up, volume down and then the function button such as answering a call or uh, changing the track. On the left ear cup you have the power button as well as the Bluetooth pairing built into one control. And then on here, you have the button that cycles through the noise canceling modes. You do have some microphones as well that are positioned on the ear cups in order to be able to hear so that number one, you can speak and use this to answer calls. And secondly, also for the noise canceling features on the headphones. Now inside these uh, headphone ear cups, are 40 millimeter beryllium drivers. I will tell you, they produce pretty good sound and pretty loud sound. So the size, in, in other words, being 40 millimeters is certainly adequate to produce very good sound here. Now, one interesting thing to note is that these are designed with Bluetooth 4.2 technology. That is not really up to date. A lot of new headphones, especially the more expensive ones or the, the newest ones, are based on Bluetooth 5.0 technology. Now, does that make a big difference in terms of using these? Probably not. You may get a little bit of a longer range with Bluetooth 5.0, but overall Bluetooth 4.2 served these headphones pretty well. All right, now on to the sound quality. Let's talk about how these headphones sound. I will just be upfront and tell you, these are very clear, crisp sounding headphones, but they're also very clinical or sterile. Basically what I'm trying to say is this headphone tries its best to accurately portray sound in the way that it was recorded, in the way that the artist had intended. It does not emphasize certain frequencies. It has a pretty clean overall frequency response. Now, a lot of people might not like that. Actually, the majority of consumer electronics and headphones tend to emphasize certain frequencies to create what we call a V-shaped frequency response, emphasizing the low notes, such as the bass notes or the deep sounding notes, and then emphasizing the high notes, such as the treble or the high-pitched uh, female vocals. But it, a lot of consumer headphones miss those mid ranges that are important for things like guitar music, etc. These headphones do not miss out. They do sound great, 
However, keep in mind for people who are bass heads or love to have a thumping low end to their music, you're really not gonna get that with these headphones without purposefully adjusting or EQing the, set, the sound to create that in these headphones. I will say, I did like the sound from these headphones. The bass is incredible. Again, not in volume and quantity, but in quality. You can truly hear very deep bass notes. In fact, deeper than any other headphone I've ever heard. And so they were impressive in that sense, but they were not fun sounding in the sense that they were not a thumping uh, bass or a vibrating, you know, intensive bass. It was more of a very controlled, in tune, and dare I say, uh, underproduced uh, bass in terms of volume and quantity. But again, these are very clear uh, headphones. They are very, they, they produce the high frequencies very well, and they do create a pretty good sound stage in the sense that you can hear the spatial separation of sounds. Like it's almost like if you hear a uh, classical music or an orchestra music, you can truly, when you're wearing these headphones and listening to the music, you can kind of position in your mind, if you close your eyes, where is each instrument player? Where is the trumpet player, the clarinets, the saxophone, the drums, etc.? You can hear them and you can picture where they are. That is what I expect and what I like in high-end headphones. So it has very good soundstage, crisp highs and clarity of music. Uh, bass depth is impressive. It does have a full sound. You're not missing out on any frequencies. So headphones like this, Oftentimes when you hear a headphone like this, you can't go back to cheaper headphones because you really hear so much more in the music. You get to hear what is in the recording a lot better than cheaper headphones. Now the active noise cancellation on this is pretty good. Is it as good as the Sony's or the Bose? No, absolutely not. Is it as good as the Apple AirPods Max? Not in the same ballpark at all because those are the best noise canceling headphones thus far in major consumer electronics, but it does a fair good job. Now again, this button controls the modes of active noise canceling. It does have uh, three different modes. It has, of course, off, where you're just having passive noise cancellation and isolation, I should say, by just simply wearing the earmuffs and it, you know, insulating your ears from the outside world and sound. So that's off mode, then it has low active noise canceling and then high. Now again, the high active noise canceling is largely reserved for very noisy, consistent or, lo or long uh, uh, rumbling sound such as being on a train or an airplane. That being said, there is some distortion that I can hear when I listen to these headphones. The active noise canceling does slightly reduce the sound quality and also Unfortunately, there is a persistent, very quiet, but persistent audible hum with the noise canceling activated. So when I was listening to these headphones, even in the gym, I preferred to turn off the noise canceling and just listen to it with the regular Bluetooth audio. Speaking of Bluetooth audio, this has some supported uh, Bluetooth codecs. It has the SBC Bluetooth codec and aptX. Now I will say though, because I use an iPhone to listen to music, unfortunately I did not get to hear the full potential of these headphones because the Apple iPhone largely relies on AAC codec, which these headphones don't support. So these headphones are truly better suited for people with Android uh, phones or some other type of audio device or listening from a computer, for example, it really doesn't do as good with Apple users. Speaking of Bluetooth, remember though, you can actually listen to music directly through the three and a half millimeter audio cable. And getting quickly back to build, build quality, one of the things that was disappointing to me was that, as you can see a little bit, this is not quite centered correctly. It's actually off a little bit in terms of alignment with the uh, three and a half millimeter cable con connector and the outside aluminum shell. That's disappointing to me. In a $500 headphone, that should not look like that. It should be well aligned, it should be perfect and premium quality feeling. You can see this uses USB-C. That is up to the modern times. That's how we should be having connectors. The USB-C is used for charging. Frequency range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Of course, you'll see that on most headphones in their in their specifications, but this really does produce 
the full frequency of sound. You're getting high quality sound with these headphones. So overall, just in general, do I recommend these headphones? Yes, but with one caveat. These headphones are not for the average user. These headphones are for people who either are not fans of very powerful bass in terms of volume, or they're for people who want to truly hear the details in the music without any frequency overbearing uh, a different frequency. So these are for people who could be sound engineers, recording artists, or simply people who like to hear audiophile grade music without having a drumming bass that is overbearing and blocking out hearing of other frequencies. Again, build quality was a little bit disappointing. Also, this is not leather. Even though the rest of the brown color on here is leather, this is not, and that's a little bit disappointing. They could have used real leather here. It would have just given it a more of a premium feel. As I said, with alignment of connections being disappointing, they're not perfectly aligned. Unlike what you'd see in a cheaper Sony headphone or Bose headphone, or even in the more expensive Apple AirPods Max headphone, you don't get issues like this with build quality and quality control. What am I gonna do with these headphones? Because I have other headphones that I like better, I'm actually gonna return these. Master and Dynamic has a very, very generous return policy. No questions asked. If you don't like the headphone and you purchase it directly from them, you have 14 days to return it, so I'm gonna pack this up and send it back. I do not picture myself using this ongoing uh, going forward because I have purchased a different premium headphone, which I will review for you in a different video. All right, guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button and absolutely please continue to subscribe to my channel. Share this video with your friends, share my channel. I would like to create more videos and I want a little bit of encouragement. So please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and comment. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. You guys all have a great evening. Adios, amigos.